Hello. Um, so, uh, first things first, I do appreciate the lighting is uh, fairly shit. Um, the sun has come out here in Ireland, and I wasn't really prepared for such an extraordinarily unlikely event. So, for now, uh, we're not looking that great. I, I have been I have uh, been told by my significant other that I can use her nice camera to make these videos in future. So, expect Spielberg levels of cinematography from now on. The other thing I want to say is just if you like the video, give it a little like there. Um, I've been told I need to say that more. Otherwise, not as many people will like the video. So, if you found it helpful, give it a like. I'll probably remind you again at the end. Today, I'm going to be going over the reverb device in Bitwig. So, if you've watched my videos before, generally, you know, I talk through the device first, and then I have a load of sound examples prepared where I'm like, oh, you can use it for this, you can use it for that. It's going to be a bit, bit different this time. Um, I'm going to go through the reverb, and I'm going to show you some cool things you can do with it, and some weird ways of using it. Um, but I'm not going to have a load of sound examples, because otherwise this video will probably get very long. So, if you'd like to see a separate video, which is just you know, reverb sounds, weird reverb sounds, let me know and I will uh, also do that. So if we just turn the reverb on here, first and foremost, we're hearing a combination of the early and the late reflections. So if we just want to hear this early section here so we can focus on it and listen to what it's doing, we just pull down the late mix here and now all we're hearing is this early reflections. So in the early reflections we have two sort of... Uh, Algorithms, I guess, are two different simulations. So one is for a room and one is for hall. They sound slightly different, room being smaller as it emulates a room and hall being bigger as it emulates probably some sort of a concert hall or something like that. So on room here, we if we pull down the size here, they've got, they've got the exact same controls no matter which one we're on. If we pull down the size, we're basically decreasing the size of the room. So we've got tiny little room here. And then as we bring it up, we got a bigger and bigger room. So we're in we're in a pretty big room at the end, 200% of a room. Uh, then we okay, also have control over the diffusion here. So the diffusion is basically, what the reverb is, is it's basically just a bunch of delays that are feeding into each other. The diffusion here, if we bring it all the way back, you can really hear that. You can really hear it's, it's kind of a metallic ringing sort of almost just sounds like a delay. And then as you bring the diffusion up, it gets more diffuse. Until at the end, it's kind of, you've got this interpretation that it's just kind of a, 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 a very diffuse and elongated sound as opposed to being able to hear individual delay lines. So, the other thing you've got here is the pre-delay. So this will allow a certain amount of the signal through before it starts the reflections. So if we listen to it right now, the minute that the sound goes through the reverb, there is reverb. If we turn up this pre-delay, let's turn it up to 100 milliseconds, there is a bit of a dry signal, and then we bring in the reverb signal. And then as we bring it down, it gets closer and closer. So why would you want to use that? Um, there's a couple of reasons. One is if you are trying to make it sound like a particular room, so some rooms, as they are bigger, will have a little bit of time between when a sound happens and when it arrives back at the microphone and you hear the reverberated sound. Um, generally, you may have some sort of a snare in this case or something like that, and you might want to just pull the reverb out of the way of the transient so that it punches through and it's not kind of being diffused by the reverb. So there's a bunch of different reasons that you may want to use a pre-delay. Um, it's kind of up to yourself in the situation. So hall is the exact same thing. We've got the exact same controls. We've got a size from a very little hall to quite a big hall. And then uh, we have the same thing, pre-delay, and if we if we bring up the size here and bring down the diffusion, you can hear it goes from being sort of a really sort of almost sounding like a delay, quite ringy, to as you bring it up, it's more and more diffuse and spread out, I guess. Um, the thing, primary difference between the hall and the room is first of all, the hall has this idea of, I suppose, being a bigger space. But also, there's a, 
almost two phases to it. So there's this kind of initial hit that comes in and then it kind of raises again. And the room is just, it's just one kind of sound that continues on. So yeah, the hall has this sort of effect of sounding almost like it's swelling. Whereas the room is more of a stable straight sound. So that's everything about the earlier fractions. Now, let's say that you had a snare that you just wanted to add a bit of ambience to. Or maybe you wanted to make it ring out or something like that. Sometimes you might want to turn the late reflections all the way down and just deal with this early part. Just to add a little bit of ambience to something or something like that. But if you don't, which is, you know, a lot of the time, we now can feed this early reflections into the late reflections. So now we've got this late mix turned up and we've got a decay. So functionally, the way that I think about it is the early reflections is basically the initial character of the reverb. And then that gets fed into the late part of the reverb, which is basically functions as the tail of the reverb. So let's have a little look at the late part here. So we've got first this build up control. Let me just turn up the, the decay here, which is how long the reverb lasts. So let's give it a good amount of time there. Build up is very similar in function to diffusion here, where it's basically diffusing the late reflection. So if it's way down here, it has this effect of almost sounding like a delay. And then as we bring it up, it gets more and more diffuse. Then as I spoke about, we have our decay here, so we can have anything from 316 milliseconds, which is a really, really short, uh, late part of the reverb, all the way up to 31 seconds. Which is just going to go on and on and on. Uh, then we have the late mix, which I spoke about, which is how much of the signal is late and how much is early. So if we have it 100% here, all we're hearing is this late part. And if we have it at 50%, we're hearing 50% of our early and 50% of our late. So you've got a lot of control over the character of this reverb. Um, the other thing we've got in here, just to explain the spectrum. So this white signal here is the signal that's coming in. And then, as you can see, this yellow signal, as I increase the time here, this yellow signal is showing us an interpretation of what is leaving the device. So, um, or at least this tank section. So if I put stuff into this tank effects, which I'll do in a minute, you'll see that affect what's happening here in the yellow part of the spectrum. Uh, the low and high here, what this is doing is it's multiplying the amount of the decay. So let's set the decay here to two seconds. So what we can do if we pull both of these down. Now let's... Um, increase this low part. So we've got this kind of area that the low part of the reflection is affecting. So we can set it here. So now it's at 361 hertz. Let's set it to 1K here. So what we're doing here is we're taking this decay and we're multiplying it. So we're saying the low part of this reverb, I want to be 1.7 times longer. So now you can hear as the reverb goes on, the high part of the reverb kind of fades out and that lower part stays longer. If we pull it back, you can hear as I go back, it's a much lower and lower part. And, and if we pull it up here to, the, to as high as it can go, it has much more of a mid-range sound. Now, if we take this high part here, let's pull down the low part. You can hear that very quickly, our low here fades out and we're left with only the high frequencies and the decay of the high frequencies is, is being multiplied. And of course, we can pull this back just past 1K here. So you have a lot of control over that. So you could have, say, your low frequencies lasting for a sort of medium amount of time, and then your high frequencies, you want those to fade out a little bit, le a little bit less quickly. So just in the main uh, controls of the, the device, you have a lot of control over the sound of your reverb over time, um, how metallic it's sounding versus how sort of diffuse it's sounding. 
and you've got control over both of those things for the early and the late. So you've got a massive amount of control over what's going on. So now we move on to uh, just quickly here. Width is going to make it uh, more stereo. If you bring it all the way down, you're going to have a mono reverb and mix is obviously the mix of the reverb overall. From none to lots. So now we've got this. Let's just dial in kind of a regular long reverb sound here. Let's have a reasonably long uh, room. That's reasonably diffuse, going into a reasonably long late. So now we've got this. Uh, let's maybe just change up this EQ a bit. So because a reverb is a chain of delays, uh, in this late section here, we've basically fed our initial sound into it, and then it's going through a chain of delays that extend the sound, and that's what's basically causing the reverb. Now, what's cool about Bitwig is not only do we have all the control in here, but we can go into the tank effects, and what we can do is put effects in there, and essentially what it does is every time we're passing through those delays, we're going through the effect again. So the, the effect is increasing over time. So the easiest way to show you that is just to do some simple alterations to the sound. So let's first start with a multi effects. So let's bring in just a multi band effects too. Now we're not gonna put any um, effects in here. I'm just gonna show you how this functions. So we've got a long reverb right now. <laughs> Now, let's say that we feel the high frequencies are, uh, I know we can do this in here, but just as an example of how it works. Let's say we feel the high frequencies are lasting too long. What could we do? We could pull them down a couple of dB. Let's pull them down a bit more than that. And let's pull them way down. So what you can hear is happening there is basically every time we're cycling through one of the delays that's, that's causing the reverb sound, it's decreasing the high frequencies. So if we're decreasing at a massive amount, initially we have a lot of high frequencies, and then very quickly we have almost none. Now what happens if we pull that up? It's gonna keep going up. But unlike what's happening in here, where we're controlling the frequency, how long the high frequency is lasting, in this situation we're increasing the high frequency over time. So the high frequency will keep increasing as the reverb goes on. So you can hear it gets brighter and brighter and brighter. Now, this also has the, the effect of extending the reverb tail. So why is it doing that? The reason it's doing that is because, because I'm increasing the frequency, uh, because I'm increasing the high frequencies, I'm increasing their volume. Every time the delay is running through the multiband effects, there's a volume increase. So if it keeps increasing in volume and then keeps being fed through a delay, it's going to extend the tail. So, so let's get rid of the multiband effects for a second. And instead, let's bring in a pitch shifter. So I've got a pitch shifter here set to one semitone. So basically what's gonna happen is the reverb tail is just gonna keep passing through that and keep steadily increasing by one semitone each time, which has the effect of making the reverb sound like it's pitching up. So let's hear that. Let's put a pretty long tail on that as well. So you can hear now the reverb is pitching up. And then let me decrease that. So let's bring that down to minus one semitone. And let's have the same effect again. So now you can hear the reverb sounds as if it's moving down in pitch. Obviously you can have more extreme examples of this. We can pitch it down 12 semitones. Then very quickly it's gonna pitch down or the same up. We've also got things like, let's move, let's bring that down. So we've also got things like the grain control here. So let's pitch it up a bit and let's also pitch down the, or bring down the grain. So the grains are getting smaller and smaller each time that the reverb is passing through it. So you can hear the reverb is kind of degrading over time. So to this pitch shifter now, I'm just gonna add an LFO. And the LFO I'm gonna put at a kilohertz so that we're getting a pitch out of it. Or even let's, ki let's key track it. Let's pull down the, let's pull down the uh, decay there. 
and let's use this LFO to modulate this pitch here. And let's make it a bit higher, maybe lower. So now you can hear that when we're putting it through, we're kind of like pitch modulating it. And the effect gets more and more extreme over time. And we could even do something like put a blur on here. So let's get the blur. And this is going to weirdly diffuse it, so let's send this out. Let's add a chorus. So yeah, obviously you can hear, you can get uh, a whole lot of insane effects by like chaining a bunch of effects on top of each other and modulating them differently within the tank effects. Um, but you don't have to do that. An awful lot of the time, the way to get the best out of the reverb is just to put a couple of simple effects in the tank effects that just make it sound a little better. So as an example, let me pull up um, Rapid Effects here, which is from the Rapid Synth. Uh, just to show you, you can use third-party effects, obviously, as well. So if I... Th they have this thing in here called the Vintageizer, which is like a lo-fi thing. So I've got... Let me just pull that off for a sec. Let's just make sort of a standard reverb sound here. So we've just got this reverb sound. So let's pull on the Vintageizer and we can see we can sort of, let's just pull it up so you can hear it. Just by adding a simple effect on here, we can drastically change the character of the reverb. So I'm just going through different sort of lo-fi models here. And we can massively change the, the character of the reverb. And let's say we wanted to add in maybe a uh, chorus here as well. Where is the chorus? Say a chorus here. So we can kind of diffuse the reverb over time. And then maybe we are finding it's just getting a little bit too uh, low frequency. So let's bring in an EQ here. And we can then just pull out some of these frequencies that are getting a bit too insane and maybe just brighten it over time as well let's pull down the mix of that chorus let's pull down the feedback as well so it's a bit more subtle and then let's just pull that back So we can just add subtle little things to change the character of the reverb. Now, the last thing to talk about here is the wet effects. Uh, the wet effects are different to the tank effects in that they don't go into the chain of delays. The wet effects are just an overall effect 
on the reverb sound. So they're they're just before its output. So for instance, if I were to take an EQ here, uh, which is a great thing to do. So we've got this reverb sound. Then on the wet effects here, we might be just be like, you know what? I want less high frequencies on that. And I want to maybe, let's find a frequency we don't like here. Say it's getting a bit muddy. Let's just pull out a tiny bit of that. And also let's high pass it. And then maybe we just want to add a little bit of chorus onto the wet as well. Just to widen it out a bit, let's put let's put Coral on there. And let's just pull the mix down. So now we have just a little bit of Chorus and a little bit of EQ. And obviously the great thing about that is once you find a uh, sound you like, you can just save this as a preset and you could even save it as your default preset. So if you find, you know, I always like to take a little bit of the high end out. I always like to cut a bit of this. I like a chorus on there. Maybe I have some saturation plugin that I use. You can have that stored here in your wet effects and then you can uh, just save that as a preset and that can be your default reverb. And then once you've done those changes, all of a sudden the stock reverb starts to sound, you know, a little bit more comparable, comparable, I've said that word. So the stock reverb starts to sound a little bit better and, you know, more in line with maybe your Valhalla stuff or something like that. So, yeah, hopefully that's helped you to understand the reverb. I think the strength of this reverb is its flexibility. I think a lot of people don't like it because initially when you load it up, it doesn't sound that great. Um, but with, you know, editing and modulation and putting effects in there, you can pretty much make it sound however you want it to sound. You have control over pretty much every aspect that you would want. So, yeah, that's everything about the reverb. Once again, I didn't go too much into specific sounds like I usually do just because there is a lot to go over in the reverb. If you'd like me to do a separate one where I show you some cool sound design stuff with it, uh, let me let me know. Let me know, and I'll do that happily. Thank you.